This is IB Physics SL. I am Mr. King. Topic 1. Measurements and Uncertainties. Section 1.3. Vectors and Scalars. In physics, there are two types of quantities. Scalar quantities that have only magnitude or amount, and vector quantities which have magnitude and direction. Here are some of the first quantities we'll learn about. Distance, speed, and time are scalar quantities. They have only magnitude. Displacement, velocity, and force are vectors. Each of those have a magnitude and direction. When a vector exists in two dimensions, both horizontal and vertical, or north and east, etc., we can calculate the component of the vector in each dimension using basic trigonometry. Here, we have a displacement vector at some angle, theta. There is a component of this displacement that is horizontal, and another component of this displacement that is vertical. The horizontal component of the displacement is equal to the displacement times the cosine of the angle and the vertical component of the displacement is equal to the displacement times the sine of the angle. Don't forget, there's a section about vector resolution in your data booklet. When two vectors both exist in the same dimension, for instance, both left or right, or both north or south, we simply add them together. It is important to note that if the two vectors are in opposite directions, we designate one direction as positive and one direction as negative to distinguish them mathematically. Keep in mind that no direction is intrinsically positive or negative, but generally will follow the convention shown on the right. Here's a couple examples. In this example, since both forces are in the same direction, we simply add them. 9 newtons plus 5 newtons is 14 newtons. In this next example, however, the forces are in opposite directions. We'll follow the convention and call the force to the left negative 5 newtons, and then we can add them. 9 newtons plus negative 5 newtons is 4 newtons. When we are combining two vectors that are not in the same dimension, we'll use a diagram to determine their resultant. There are two methods for doing this. The first is commonly called the tip-to-tail method. I'll use this method when the second vector begins where the first vector ends. In this method, the tip of the first vector is connected to the tail of the second vector. Once this is done, we can draw the resultant from the position where the first vector begins to the position where the second vector ends. Displacement vectors are typically presented in this way. The other method for combining vectors is commonly referred to as the parallelogram method. I use this method when two vectors are originating at the same point. To use this method, draw dotted or dashed or lightly drawn lines to create a parallelogram with vectors A and B as two of the adjacent sides. Then we draw a vector as the diagonal of the parallelogram, beginning where the two vectors originated. Force and velocity vectors are typically presented in this way. When the component vectors are oriented perpendicular to each other, we can use the Pythagorean theorem and basic trigonometry to determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant. When the component vectors are not perpendicular to each other, we need to use a scale diagram, a ruler, and a protractor to determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant. In this example, the resultant is 10 centimeters long. If our diagram is drawn to a scale of 1 centimeter equals 5 kilometers, then our resultant represents 50 kilometers. We can use a protractor to measure the number of degrees between the resultant and vector A. In this case, about 20 degrees. One last thing. If we needed to subtract vector B from vector A, we could instead add vector A to the negative of vector B, using one of the previous methods. That's it for now. See you next time.